feel like it's not to be really loud. No, no, it's okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. I just didn't want to blast you to high heaven this early in the service. Um, good morning and welcome. Uh, we're glad that you're here at Brownsville United Methodist Church to worship in the name of the risen Christ as we grow in, in faith and love to serve our neighbors, to declare and demonstrate God's boundless love for all. Uh, we're still living in the light of the resurrection, so if I say Christ is risen, you might say... He is risen indeed. Christ is risen? He is risen indeed. All right, just making sure you're with me today. Um, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection by, um, by celebrating uh, Native American Ministry Sunday, one of the six special Sundays in the United Methodist Church. And I'll share more about kind of what it all is and more specifics, but I just want to put on your radar for later in the service. Is there a slide with that pie chart, Tom? This one, we'll, we'll be, we'll be um, having a special collection to, to support uh, this special Sunday. And 50% of any gifts collected go to stay in this conference. Um, and I'll explain kind of what those indigenous ministries here in the Washington Pacific Northwest Annual Conference look like. But 50% of all gifts stay here. 25% go to fund seminary scholarships for Native uh, seminary students, and then 25% go to global outreach and uh, witness movements, and we'll hear some examples of those, but just to put that on your radar for later. Why don't you stand with me as you're willing and able, let's join together in our call to worship. By Jeff Bromsland, Mohawk. Creator made all that is and proclaim that it is good. Creator, help us to discover in all you have made in nature the good wisdom about the interconnectedness of all things, about balance, and about living in harmony. We are not above nature. We are part of creation. We live by the same laws as all of nature and need to learn from what God has made. Creator, help us discover the power that lies in the wisdom and understanding of our role in the great mystery and in honoring every living thing as a teacher. seated in an attitude of prayer. God of miracles and truth, bless your church as we gather for worship in the name of the risen Christ. Reveal your presence in our midst and open our hearts and minds to receive your wondrous love. Strengthen our faith this day through our words and our hearing that we may go forth as witnesses to your resurrection. And all God's people said, Amen. Acts 3, 12 through 19 from the Common English Bible. Seeing this, Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why are you amazed at this? Why are you staring at us as if we made him walk by our own power or piety? 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus. This is the one you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, even though he had already decided to release him. You rejected the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you instead. You killed the author of life, the very one whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses of this. His name itself has made this man strong. That is, because of faith in Jesus' name, God has strengthened this man whom you see and know. The faith that comes through Jesus gave him complete health right before your eyes. Brothers and sisters, I know you acted in ignorance, so did your rulers, but this is how God fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Change your hearts and lives. Turn back to God so that your sins may be wiped away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Second lesson, Luke 24, 36b through 48. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Indeed. (laughs) Like I mentioned earlier, there are six special Sundays, count them, six in the United Methodist, uh, or six special Sundays that the United Methodist Church observes each year. For those of you math-inclined folks, that's about 12% of the year. Now, I'll admit that 12% of the year sounds at first like quite a lot to uh, focus on special giving and special ministry efforts. And I'm not, I haven't been, you know, super good at staying on top of these on the calendar. They kind of come and sneak up on us um, and on me. And while each cause and mission, whether it's UMCOR, World Communion Sunday, uh, Peace with Justice Sunday, they're all worthwhile and good causes, absolutely. But today, Native American Ministry Sunday is unique in the sense that it is very specific about who and what uh, the special giving goes towards. 
today is about supporting and honoring indigenous communities who though they are many and very diverse, absolutely, there is also a shared broader history of mistreatment and social uh, marginalization at the hands of the broader country. So I could simply tell you more about this special Sunday. I could parrot the sort of three different foci that the church gives out, and you could just hear more of me talk. But I thought it would be better um, to introduce, I'll show a quick video and introduce you to two people um, from the Great Plains Annual Conference, which is where I originally come from, the Kansas and Nebraska area. Uh, the first person is Bishop David Wilson, who you'll meet on the video. He is the first Native American bishop to be elected in the United Methodist Church uh, to the Episcopacy. He uh, was elected just last year, or end of 2022. And then the second person is named Tony Saborsic. He's a colleague of mine, um, a friend of mine, who was in the same ordination class as me. And so um, they, in the conference, put together a really great video on this Sunday, and I just want to show it to you and we'll get a sense of, of what's going on here. Native American Ministry Sunday is upon us. Observed the second Sunday after Easter on April 14, it is one of six special Sundays that we observe in the United Methodist Church. Created in 1988, this special Sunday is a denominational-wide celebration designed to raise awareness and remind United Methodists of the gifts and contributions made by Native Americans to our society. I have to say that the people of the Great Plains know much about those gifts and contributions as we gave the most of any annual conference on this special Sunday. I believe this has been the case for several years. Congratulations and thank you to all of our churches that have recognized this Sunday and collected funds. Funds from this special Sunday help in many ways. We send 25% of what we collect to the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry to provide scholarships to Native American students in seminary and also course of study. I have served on the committee to award scholarships for many years, and it's always a joy to keep up with these candidates as they work towards their degrees. I was honored last year to ordain 22 pastors in the Great Plains Conference at my very first conference in 2023. Among them was Tony Saborsic. Tony is the first Lakota to be ordained in the Great Plains Annual Conference. He is currently serving at First United Methodist Church at Abilene, Kansas. Tony was a recipient of this award for several years. Let's listen to his story. When I started seminary nearly 10 years ago, I found tuition to be very costly. Seminary can be difficult to fund. Few Native Americans enter seminary due to the lack of financial resources. Through the Native American Seminary Scholarship Fund, I received $60,000 that covered my cost of tuition and associated fees during the time I was in school. Without such aid, I wouldn't have been able to attend seminary. I am so grateful for this scholarship fund and have become an advocate for such scholarships through the United Methodist Global Board of Higher Education and Ministry. It has helped me turn a dream I have had ever since high school into a reality. As you know, there is still a tremendous shortage of Native American clergy within the United Methodist Church. I urge you to consider giving to this special offering for Native American ministries and help make dreams come true for future Native American clergy. Our Committee on Native American Ministry has been busy with projects to help educate folk on issues that are important to us and also events of the past, which are not always pleasant topics. A gap in knowledge exists in the, in the United Methodist Church and congregations and other United Methodist entities relative to understanding Native American life, cultures, language, spirit, values, contemporary issues, and more. In September of 2023, the committee hosted a day of remembrance 
which was designed to hear the story of Native American boarding schools of the past and how they still impact Native folk today. About 150 people gathered at Central United Methodist Church in Lawrence, Kansas to listen to stories and to gather in solidarity with our Native sisters and brothers. Conam is planning another event for next September near one of our boarding school sites at Genoa, Nebraska. According to records, there were eight boarding schools in both Nebraska and Kansas. At least two of those were connected to the Methodist Church. 50% of what we collect from this special Sunday stays in the Great Plains Conference for events such as the Boarding School Remembrance. The committee is working to award funds to special projects that relate to Native Americans. 25% goes to scholarships, and the last 25% goes to fund ministry projects for Native Americans through the General Board of Global Ministries. These projects have ranged from supporting young Native Americans to events such as Youth 23, to funds to create a Native American exhibit in the lower level concourse of the Atlanta airport. I thank you in advance for taking time to observe this Sunday in some manner in your local church. It can be through music, speakers, litanies, and more. When I visited with the clergy and lay people at the United Methodist Church in Coffeeville, I was pleasantly surprised by the youth group. They learned a verse of Cherokee and Choctaw of Amazing Grace. They did a wonderful job, and I was so happy they took time to learn those hymns in honor of myself. Thank you for your great ministry and for recognizing this special Sunday. So I hope it came through. I hope you were able to, you know, I tried to get the subtitles, but the format wouldn't work. But I'll send it out in the weekly email um, later, later this week with the subtitle version if you want to go back and look. And even though it's, they're talking about the Great Plains Annual Conference, the message and the impact is the same and translates regardless of geographic area. Um, but I, I can say though that I'm proud to be one of the 21 people who along with Tony was ordained by Bishop David Wilson last year. Uh, and again, as the first Native American Bishop, uh, Bishop Wilson, his identity as a member of the Choctaw Nation is, is no secret and it's a large part of how he leads uh, the church. But I have to tell you, when I first saw this video, when it came through on email last week, I, I was actually surprised to see Tony in the video. Now, we're not best of friends, we're colleagues, we're, you know, uh, but we were in the same ordination class, and I saw him once a year in person for about five years when we met in um, back there to um, have our ordination interviews and all that stuff. And yeah, I never knew he was a member of the Lakota Nation. So that was a surprise to me. And, you know, we might wonder or, you know, could say, well, perhaps he didn't want to share that with me or didn't know how to share it or, or some things like that. But something more impactful that I wonder is why I didn't have the curiosity to, to ask or to learn. And what I'm saying is not the curiosity to notice that someone has a higher melanin content in their skin tone and then asking, no, but where are you really from, right? That's not the kind of curiosity I mean. The kind of curiosity that I'm talking about is just simple, plain, everyday questions and curiosities about somebody's life, where they're from, their family, what's important to them, giving someone a chance to show you who they are on their terms. And I'm not saying I did something bad or wrong. I just never took that opportunity with Tony. So I didn't know this very important part of, of who he was until I saw this video. And this for me is why Native American Ministries Sunday is so important. It celebrates the already present witness and faith of our Native siblings, and it raises the bar, raising it up a little bit for making Native Americans more visible in our churches and in our communities. It's doing both of those things. So I try to read at least a portion of a book every week, depending on what the text is saying or what I'm wanting to maybe preach about um, on the weekend. And one of the books I was looking at this week is called All of the Real Indians Died Off and 20 Other Myths About Native Americans by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz and Dina Gilio Whitaker are their names. I like this book, and you might too, because it's 21 chapters that are written as standalone essays 
you don't have to read the whole book to kind of get the gist. You can sort of pick and choose. Um, it works for me. I can read a little bit less and still get a full idea. Um, each of the chapters, they address a different myth or narrative, something that you may have heard once or twice in your life about Native Americans, like, let's see here, myth number three, Columbus discovered America. Um, Myth number nine, U.S. presidents were benevolent or at least fair-minded towards Indians. Myth 13, sports mascots honor Native Americans. Yeah, there's, there's many others. Um, and by the way, the, uh, the authors use the term Indians in the title of the book and as kind of the keynote myth that they address, not because it's the best word or terminology to use when talking about Native people, but because it communicates the way that our language, our language choices can communicate and encapsulate much larger stories um, than we may even realize, even when they're not true. And, and the example here, or in this case, um, when the first European explorers landed in North America, uh, they named the people they encountered Indians. Do you know why? Yet, they thought they were in India, but they weren't. <laughs> they just didn't know any better. So I, uh, I'll, I'll share with you the advice that, that, they, that they offer in the book um, as sort of a practical little tidbit here, um, because a question that often comes up is, okay, well, what terminology do you use? Um, or do we... Is Indian okay to use? Do we say Native American, indigenous people, native, right? There are many, many different terms. And I'll share with you what they say. There is no one kind of term or word reference that works in 100% of all situations. It doesn't exist, sorry to say. Um, we can use interchangeably, though, perhaps, words like indigenous, Native American, native peoples. Those can all be used interchangeably. The overarching principle, though, is when it's possible to refer to Native nations by their name. The Suquamish Nation, the Macaw Nation, the Duwamish. The list goes on and on. Use the nation's name when you can, and always defer to their preference on what they are called. Right? That's just a basic idea that makes sense, but it's one small thing that we can do. We can put in a little bit of extra effort to more fully honor Native American faith and wisdom around us. I really did enjoy this book. Um, I didn't read it all, but read a few chapters. And I found it as a recommendation from the UMC resource website. And they had probably 10 or 15 books there recommended. I was drawn to this one, however, because of the reference of death in the title. I found it fascinating. Um, that on the third Sunday after Easter, um, we would have Native American Ministry Sunday, and I would be reading a book about, in part, death, when we're proclaiming again and again and again that death has been defeated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's true. Death has been defeated. And yet, the lived experience of our Native siblings serves as an example of how death is at times still reigning in our culture and in our world. When we jump into the text of God, uh, in Luke's gospel, we pick up where we left off. The two disciples who encounter the risen Christ in Emmaus, they run back to Jerusalem to tell their friends what they had seen. We start off in verse 36. The good news is they made it back safely. And right as they are in the middle of telling their story about who they saw and what he did and everything that they encountered at that dinner table, Jesus himself, the risen Lord, appears and immediately offers to the group, peace be with you. The very first thing out of his mouth. And then he goes on to tell them, look at my hands, look at my feet. See where the nails pierced my body. See that it's me. It's really me. Touch me. Look, ghosts don't have flesh and bones. 
Jesus is showing them that this isn't a mirage. It's not that they had too much wine at dinner. It's not a dream. This is real life, real flesh that has denied death its victory. In this resurrection scene, Jesus is dispelling the disciples' belief that all of their hope, all of our hope, had died with Jesus on the cross. In a similar way, Native American Ministry Sunday dispels the myth that Native Americans have died off. It both remembers and then dismembers the violent history of forced assimilation, of stolen land, and broken treaty rights, which have been, in their own ways, attempts to see Native people erased from the face of our country. But church, the good news today, on the third Sunday in Easter, is that our Native, si our native siblings, just like our holy God, have persisted through death, best efforts. And today, they are very much alive. Thanks be to God. Today, may we be a part of that new life by offering a portion of ours as a sign of our hope in the resurrection. Amen. out of the Green Book Worship and Song.
Thanks, Andrew, for leading us to our song. I like it a lot. Well, let's continue, church, and I promised I'd share a little bit more about where um, any monies collected during this uh, special Sunday go, or, or that are dedicated for this um, special giving. I don't know why I'm going to the meeting elements. <laughs> um, do we have, there it is, thank you. So, again, 50% remain in our annual conference. They don't all go to the Great Plains Annual Conference. If They stay here in Washington. In particular, um, in our conference, our ministry arm, our resource arm, um, is called the Circle of Indigenous Ministries. Um, it's a resource program, and their executive director is the Reverend Dr. Alan Buck, who also serves as the pastor of Great Spirit United Methodist Church in Portland. And what the Circle of Indigenous Ministries does um, it's quite new, actually. It was established sometime last year, like mid-year last year. So they're still kind of getting up and running, but some of the things that they've um, done and put out so far is they've shared some resources that I drew from for planning and preparing for this, for this Sunday. Uh, they have some essays and resources for churches who want to consider uh, adopting a land acknowledgement. Uh, and a land acknowledgement is a, a statement of um, whose ancestral land our church resides on. And so before the Treaty of Point Elliot in 1855, this was, my understanding is that this was Suquamish land. Um, the Duwamish also had some claim to it as well. But I shared some land acknowledgments during a sermon series um, a few months back, and that was one that I just kind of adapted from the Suquamish Nation. But these resources are for churches who want to adopt one Together, So that is some work that we could do together if we wanted to, and I think that's really exciting. Um, they've also helped churches navigate and communicate with Native nations um, in a few examples where churches have actually given back unused land back to that nation who's, who, who, who lived there before the treaty. I, I know of at least two examples in um, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho Collective, where, where that's happened. Um, very, very incredible. So 50% remains here to do that very specific work. 25% goes to scholarships, like poor my friend, Tony. And, you know, you may not be wondering this, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of say it out loud anyway. Um, and why a special fund just for Native American seminarians? You know, why not offer more seminary scholarship funds to everybody, right? Um, here's why. Um, there's a difference in equality versus equity. And the creation of the Native American Scholarship Fund is an equitable response to a much longer history of selective financial, um, financial assistance to people who feel called to be Methodist pastors. And in addition to, you know, stolen land, um, affected financial and economical uh, realities. People like my friend Tony are not often in the insider kind of Methodist circles. And what I mean by that is there exists still a system of privilege and you know somebody who knows somebody who has a lot of money, and if you kind of pass their sniff test, um, you're in. And a real example of this is when I applied for seminary, I was reached out to by an anonymous benefactor, a farmer in Kansas, who wanted to give me, and did give me, $25,000 to help fund my seminary education. I didn't have to apply for it. I didn't have to do anything for it. I was simply told, basically, I passed the sniff test white, straight, man. I passed the sniff test. I didn't have to try very hard. Um, Native Americans, like my friend Tony, don't often pass those sniff tests, unfortunately. So that is why this 25% is so incredibly And then finally, the 25% goes to global outreach and ministries. In case you didn't hear what, ba what Bishop Wilson said, um, one example of that 25% is the United Methodist Church has funded a Native American exhibit at Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport, one of the most, one of the busiest airports in, in the world. 
So I think that is incredibly cool. So all that to say, this is what the invitation is. In addition to our regular acts of generosity and worship, um, if you feel called either today or throughout the rest of the week to support this mission, would you consider that? I'm going to invite um, Daniel, would you mind serving us today? And yeah. Uh, you can come by, you can place a gift in the plate, you can give online. Also, those wooden coins, don't forget, are acts of worship as well. Thank you. you to stand as you're willing and able and let's sing and give thanks for these gifts. God of all generations, we praise you and thank you for your blessings, both seen and unseen. We thank you for the richness of the diversity that is your creation and we have seen in our community. As we present these gifts to you, the ones that have been given and the ones that will be given, we pray that you multiply them so that we might multiply with you in your transforming love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. And let's continue together in prayer. For whom shall we remember today? Yeah, Jan. Oh, Don and Terry. Don. I'm sorry to hear that. Kyla and Luke, yeah, a, fr a co-worker and her husband diagnosed with brain cancer, all too young, wow. Kyla and Luke, right? Great. Peace in Wynn, Arkansas, where there was a shooting, mercy Lord. Stabbing in where? Australia. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, 
escalating war yeah. in Ukraine. Safety while traveling, yeah. God of all nations, of all peoples. We praise you as the one who trampled over death, who invites us to come and to see the tomb, and who does not leave us there. Thank you that your love does not leave us in the tomb. Thank you for the many examples of life which we have been witnesses to, which we see, the gift of new life, the birth of a granddaughter. We give thanks for the witness and presence of Native peoples here in Kitsap County and Western Washington and throughout our country and the world, and special thanks for the presence and witness of Native peoples here in our church, Brownsville. Lord, in your mercy, press us close to your heart. We continue to pray for peace in war-torn areas, for Gaza, Ukraine, have mercy, O oh God. We also pray for Russia, for Israel, for Iran, escalating conflict. Pray for victims of stabbings in Australia and victims of violence all throughout the world. God, we don't know what to say when we see these Things come across the newsreel other than that we want it to stop. Help us to be on no side but on the side of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, press us close to your heart. We pray for all who are in anticipation, anticipation of new life, anticipation of the birth of a child, for Laura and Tom, for Meg and Tyler, for Drew and Paige, for Jess and Trent. Pray for Susan, for the two by two church, for Dennis, for Kyla and for Luke, for Wynn, Arkansas, for our brother, for a brother, Don and his wife, Carrie. Lord, in your own way and in your own time, bring the light of the resurrection to these persons, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, press us close to your heart. There are many who are waiting, oh God, for test results, or who have received test results, are waiting for the next doctor's appointment, or even waiting to schedule the next doctor's appointment. There are those in this very room who live with this anticipation. Speak what you spoke to those disciples, oh God. Speak it to our hearts, that peace would be with us. Show us how we can be a church community that surrounds each other with prayer, with care, and with love. Lord, in your mercy, press us close to your heart. Let's continue drawing close to the heart of God and the risen Christ as we come to the table of Holy Communion. Let's join by saying together these prayers of 
uh, confession pardon together. God of justice, as we draw near toward your table of promise, My siblings in Christ, hear again the good news. Jesus came to us and to the world, bringing an abundance of life, and indeed gave us his life, trampling over death, so that we would know God's love for us. In the name of the risen Christ, you are embraced with God's never-ending love. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks again to the Lord our God. We give our thanks and we offer our entire being to you, O God of creation, the one who made the sun and the moon to govern the day and night, the one who hung the stars in the sky. We offer our entire being to the great God who hollowed out the valleys and bulged up the mountains, who spat out the seven seas and populated the world with glorious creatures. Blessed be the name of the Lord who created each of us and fashioned us from the dust and breathed into us the breath of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus the Christ, who came to us in spite of our destructive ways. He healed the sick, raised the dead, and cast out demons. In the brief time that he was with us, Jesus sided with the oppressed, had compassion for those who suffer and gave dignity to women, children, and native people. He taught us in word and deed about a God we had been unable to understand. In spite of his glory-revealing presence among us, we turned him into a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Jesus was persecuted by the powerful and betrayed by one of his own. He was lied about, tortured, and hung on a cross to die. But early on the morning on the third day, Jesus laughed at death, shed his grave clothes, and walked among us alive. Forty days later, he ascended into heaven. And now our eyes are, tor are turned towards the fullness of peace, looking for that day when Jesus shall return to a kingdom without end, where the lion will lie down peaceably with the lamb, where sickness and disease are not known, where the wicked will cease from troubling, and we will study war no more. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he shared a meal with his closest disciples. We remember how he brought them in. He washed their feet, and then he took bread. He blessed it and broke it, giving it to them, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he poured it out and gave it to his disciples, even to the one who would betray him later that night, and said, Drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin, and so that you would know my love for you. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of all of these, you are we, the people of Brownsville, offer ourselves 
in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice. In union with this, Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Holy God, pour out your spirit. Pour it out in abundance upon us gathered here and online out of love for you and one another. And pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be broken bread and poured out wine. Almighty God, we cry out to you on behalf. On behalf of those who suffer from the evils of poverty, have mercy. Have mercy upon all who have lost their way. Have mercy upon all who have been wronged by the church. Have mercy upon all who feel forgotten and neglected. And have mercy upon us, blessed triune God. And through the receiving of these gifts, call us once more as your beloved people. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with you and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Friends, these are the gifts of God given freely for the people of God. Here at Brownsville, all are invited to come and receive, no matter who you are, where you're from, whom you love, or how many times you've been to this church. All of the elements are gluten-free and alcohol-free. Um, all are invited and none are required. So as you feel led, won't you come and receive? <laughs>
our friends and family who worship with us online. I know Matt is there, at least, because he gave a prayer request. Matt and all others, this is the body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you, because the risen Christ loves you. Thanks be to God. And all the church said, Amen. I invite you to stand once more as you're willing and able, and we'll sing our final hymn of sending, and then go forth. you know, I invite you to come and be a part of the church council meeting this Thursday, if that inclines you. Um, if you're a part of the church council, you're expected to be there. Um, if, but anybody is welcome to be a part of person or virtually and can, can speak into the things that we're discussing. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, a few other things that'll go through that you can kind of read um, on your way out. If you're on the OPOP team, we'll meet back there in the pray ground, you know, 12, 15, something like that, once you get your coffee and chat for a bit. Uh, anything else that needs to be shared for the good of the church today? Did I miss anything? Delay that last question. <laughs> Nothing else, though. Okay. Then I will offer you this benediction that comes from a collection of youth here in our um, conference. Um, they have these things called SLAM trips, and students learning about ministry, and they took a trip to the Yakima Reservation, and they, in connection with the Circle of Indigenous Ministries that I mentioned, they provided some liturgical resources for churches, and I wanted to share this benediction. May you go forth from this place of blessing and be a witness to God's love for you and all people. May God grant you the courage to repent, the strength to heal, and the wisdom to seek reconciliation. May our actions, as the church, honor the sacred teachings of Jesus and foster unity among all nations. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>